Now, sometimes Gauss's theorem is going to be applicable even in cases where you would think, oh, it can't work there because I don't have an enclosed volume. Let's look at an example where this happens, an example of computing flux. Let's say I give you the vector field f, and f is e to the x squared i minus 3yj plus quantity 5 minus z to the ninth k. And I want to compute the flux of this out of the faces of a cube, a unit cube between the origin at one corner and the point 111 at the other corner, but I want the flux out of the lower five faces of this cube. So that means the top face is open or empty. We're going to use outward pointing normals for this. And what do we do? Well, first of all, I can't use Stokes' theorem. I would like to reduce this to an integral over that boundary curve at the top, but that would mean that my vector field f would have to be the curl of something, and I have no idea what it might be the curl of. And in fact, with a little bit of work that I'm not going to show, you could prove that this is not the curl of anything. So goodbye, Stokes. It is not applicable in this case. So I guess that means we just have to do things the hard way. We would have to do five surface integrals and do a direct computation over these five faces. Well, that's doable. That's not so bad. But let me show you a different way to go about doing this. Let's make Gauss's theorem work. Let's make it work by closing up the cube, adding that face at the top so that we get an enclosed volume, applying Gauss's theorem to that, and then subtracting off the flux that comes through that missing top face. Now that's going to require doing one surface integral across that top face, but that's not bad because the normal vector to that is k, we're using outward pointing normals, and the flux out of the top is the double integral over that top face of the vector field f dotted with k. Now the k component of that vector field is 5 minus z to the ninth, but across that top face, z is a constant. It's equal to 1. That means I'm integrating 4 with respect to area. That's 4 times the area. It's a unit square, so the flux out of the top is equal to 4. Okay, that was not so bad, but instead of doing the other five faces, let's keep going. Let's apply Gauss's theorem. Let's close up the cube by adding that top face and then integrate the divergence of f over the interior. Now, this looks a little scary, but it's not going to be so bad. You can show that the divergence is 2x e to the x squared minus 3 minus 9z to the eighth. Now, that looks bad to integrate, but it's not because the limits of integration are so nice. I'm just going from 0 to 1 in each case, and this breaks up into really three simple separate integrals. You can check that you get e to the x squared yz minus 3 times xyz minus xy times z to the ninth. Evaluate x, y, and z from 0 to 1, and a little bit of algebra is going to give you an answer for the flux out of this full cube as being e minus 4. And now that's it. We're done. Because what I can do is I could say the net flux is the total flux out of the entire cube boundary minus that top flux. That's e minus 4 minus 4 giving a final answer of e minus 8. That is one way that you can use Gauss's theorem even in settings where it doesn't immediately seem applicable.